Welcome to the Brand Doctor Podcast, strategies that help entrepreneurs build reputable and profitable brands. Here's your host, Henry Kaminsky Jr. Hey, what's going on? Henry Kaminsky, the Brand Doctor is here with another podcast episode for you guys. As we further along the conversation this week, when it comes to there's nothing passive about branding. Today, I want to talk about a topic that's very, very important. And here it is, guys. Trust is earned. That's the bottom line. And at the center of all brands, there's a little thing that I like to call transactions. Now, you might think it's sales, but there's a lot of brands that exist without sales. Think churches, think political parties. So at the core, there's always a transaction. There's always a trade of some kind. There's always a give and take. Whether it be an exchange of services, an exchange of goods, an exchange of something, but there's always an exchange one one way or another. So you have to get your head around that because that's like the food, the water, the air that lets your brand live. So we talked about this plenty of times already, but I'm going to hammer it home again. People only ever buy for two reasons, to get pleasure or to remove pain. That's it. So no matter what your brand does, it always is going to resolve down to some aspect of those two core things. Get get pleasure, remove pain, bottom line. So I want you to think about something for a moment. Put yourself in this position. You need a root canal tomorrow. Do you go to the dentist who just graduated dental school? Or do you go and look for the experienced dentist that specializes in root canals? Let me take it a step further. You want to be a dentist's first patient? I sure as hell wouldn't. So no one wants to help a dentist lose their dental virginity. If you love your teeth like I do, (laughs) you're with me. Believe me. So let's go less extreme for a second. Would you get your hair cut done by someone who's in beauty school or would you choose between an experienced hairstylist versus a beauty school student? You pick. And if you're still not clear of what I'm trying to say here, would you want a licensed CPA to do your books for your business or would you take on a tax keeping hobbyist? I know it's an odd hobby, but we all know that guy that likes to help his buddies with their taxes. Nine times out of 10, you wind up paying more. <laughs> so do you want that guy or do you want a proven pro? Let's look at pets for a second. Would you take your pet to a licensed vet or would you go down the street and ask your cousin who's good with dogs what they think? We all do this. We all use our social circle to get knowledge. But when it comes time to get results, when it comes time to get your teeth drilled, we all want the best pro we can find, right? So from dentists to hairdressers to mechanics to accountants to veterinarians, we all look for someone we can trust. So when money's on the line, when health's on the line, when image is on the line, Hell, when a pool cleaner comes to your house, a complete stranger, to clean your pool, we all want to look for people and brands we can feel that we trust. Trust is the essence of exchange. Trust is a prerequisite. Trust is the oil that lets that exchange flow. Trust is what sets the great brands apart from the wannabes. So here's today's lesson. So what is trust and how do you get it? Well, let me give you the shortcut first, and then we'll get into the details. The fastest path to get trust is historical success. What's your reputation? People tend to feel that historical performance is a great indicator of future performance. And they're usually right. Think about the dentist in that example. We all want the dentist with good referrals, right? When we first move to a new city and we need a new dentist, what's the first thing that we do? We ask around and we ask people who they use. I have a friend who interviewed seven dentists when he moved into his new town before deciding on the dentist that he chose. The fastest 
the fastest path to trust is to have a track record of success. That's it. Do good work. Come through. Be reliable. We look for dentists with the best history of success before they touch my teeth for a root canal. We look for a hairstylist with experience and achievement and a reputation. Now, let me give you a little bonus gem tonight. <laughs> no one trusts CEOs or politicians anymore. You know, back in the 50s, there was a survey and it asked people who they trusted the most. And the people strongly believed in the corporate CEOs and elected officials, rating them number one as a source of trusted information, even higher than the news and the journalists. Like if the CEO of Ford announced some new feature, people took it as gospel. If the president said something, people treated it as a fact. But something shifted. Something shifted around the Nixon era. And we lost faith in the corporate officials and the elected officers. Nowadays, we, bar we barely believe anything a corporate CEO says or a politician, right? We live in an era of fake news where we've lost all faith in journalists, lost our beliefs in the news programs, lost our beliefs in the elected officials. And somewhere near the bottom of it all, we've completely lost faith in the corporate officers. You can market all you want, guys. You can shout from the rooftops with the loudest megaphone that you have about your amazing history or success, but that will barely matter anymore because people don't trust company officers. You know who they trust? The same study was conducted in 2012, and what they found was shocking. You ready? A friend, a peer, or someone just like me, Henry, was the number one source of trusted information. Ask yourself, when you, when you go to Amazon, right? Me and my cousin were just having this conversation. Do you check the reviews before you buy the product? A shocking 80% of shoppers check the reviews before they buy. Think about that for a second. People don't go to the Canon website to hear about the amazing new camera. Sure, they go and check out the features on the site, but they want to know if it's good. And where do they go? They check reviews from friends, peers, and someone just like me. So this is a hugely important aspect of a good brand development. I like to say brand development is building trust. Check this out. Back in 2010, there was a study called the Customer Experience Impact Report. And that report found that 82% of customers are willing to abandon a brand after a single experience, one experience, and it was over. So running a business and building a brand in the modern world is insanely competitive. People have more options than ever before, and they simply can't and won't tolerate bad experiences the way they used to. They just won't. So all that hard work, all that brand and trust building crushed in a single bad day. Listen, we all have bad days, but when it comes to building your brand and building your business, it's not the customer's fault. It's not. You got to come through. So it takes a lifetime to build trust, but it can be destroyed in a instant, a split second. So how are you instilling and building trust in your marketplace? Today, I want you to think about trust. Of course, cultivating reviews from friends and peers and testimonials and someone like your ideal client are the holy grail of trust building. But that's just one touch point. We're going to do a whole week on this soon, but today I want you to think about all the other ways you can build and communicate trust. Yesterday, we spoke about Apple and we did some brand review on them. Let me ask you, does their packaging build trust? Does their website instill confidence? Yes or no? Do their stores make potential clients feel like they can trust Apple? 
Historical success is evidenced in everything that we do. Let me give you one more last odd example. Watches, wristwatches. Nice watches are a very, very odd thing because they are a signal to others. They signal historical success to some people while they signal decadence to other people. Personally, you guys know I've been talking about it all year. This is my 10 year anniversary at Unique Designs. 10 years ago, I started this business. I'm very proud to say that I'm still around. Now, if you're a little mathy, you know that 94% of all new businesses close within 10 years. I'm still standing, baby. So the 10 year anniversary is a huge one for me. So what did I do? I bought myself a new Rolex. I bought my, I bought, I bought one when I was, when I hit the five year mark and I bought another one just the other day when I hit the 10 year mark. Now it's not an insanely expensive one that you see Rick Ross and Jay Z wearing. That's not the Rolex that I got, but it was definitely a nice one. So now I know for some of my clients, a nice watch signals, a history of success. And for other potential clients, they don't like it because it also signals that I'm not cheap and I'm not the cheapest dude on the block. And I tell people that straight up front, listen, I am not the cheapest guy on the block. So, you know, I'm just giving you the heads up. So as we wrap up today and look at that concept a little bit, we need to understand that in both cases, those people are getting the correct signal tied to that watch. If I was running a nonprofit, like a soup kitchen or something, it probably wouldn't be the appropriate watch to be wearing around. Remember brand integrity? I talked about that a couple of weeks ago. All aspects right down to your shoes and the watch that you're wearing are communicating with your clients and everything has to add up to a single brand message. Brand integrity. Remember I talked about that yesterday. So if I ran a soup kitchen, a Rolex date just would probably be the wrong watch to wear. But I'm a brand consultant. I develop brands. So think about it. Would you want to hire an unsuccessful person to help you build your brand? Or would you want to hire someone with a history of success, visible in everything that they do. If you want to develop your brand into a trusted brand, then you have to understand how important it is of your past success, your present success, and what your future success looks like. So there you have it, guys. Another podcast in the books. Don't take this one lightly. Remember, trust is earned and there's nothing passive about branding. As long as you listen to this podcast, you will understand everything that we do from here on out is done intentionally. It's done on purpose. So hope you enjoyed this one, guys. If you haven't subscribed, if you haven't left a review, if you haven't shared this with a friend or colleague yet, please do so. And I just appreciate every single one of you that are listening and the feedback that I'm getting from you guys is just amazing. And it just keeps me fired up. And I feel like every episode is just getting better and better and better. So have an awesome day, guys. Let this one sink in a little bit and apply it, apply it. So have an awesome day and I'll catch you on the next episode, guys. Take care. You've been listening to the Brand Doctor Podcast with Henry Kaminsky Jr. To get your appointment with the doctor, visit Brand Audit at www.uniquedesigns.net.